the yeah. nine intense experiences. So what is the, what, give us the, like the premise of that book. Sure. So the nine intense experiences. So this was based really on man, over a decade of, of study um, long before all of the recent research that I'm pleased to see coming out on the importance of awe, A-W-E, and uh, making sure that you engage in awe um, experiences that, that drive awe. It's super healthy for you in a lot of different respects we can touch on. But long before all that, um, you know, I myself delved into uh, basically that. And I started studying different cultures um, and uh, different times. What are the most life-changing experiences that human beings can engage in mm. that really um, impact your health at a physical level, uh, mental, emotional, and uh, dug deep into that. And I identified, you know, through different cultures across different times, nine key different areas of experience that are core to uh, being human, to engaging in if you want to live life with a capital L, to becoming healthier. Um, you know, and we don't have to dive into all of these now, uh, you know, but I can touch on some of them for you. Um, but you know, the bottom line I found is that many of these experiences, people are not engaging in nearly at the level that they need to be. And it's tied mm. to things like the loneliness epidemic plaguing, you know, our, our uh, Western world really here today. So many people feeling lonely. So a couple of the experiences that, you know, the first one is um, really got to do with playing and adults tend to frown on playing right now people may not be frowning but they do not prioritize playing getting more joy in life and going out and having fun um you know uh, like it in different times that they used to it's yeah. kind of frowned down upon you know because i got important things to do it's pushed off in the corner of when i can get to it or it's for kids you know that's for the kids yeah. i'm an adult yeah. i don't play anymore which which is total bullshit like it's it's a conditioning that limits us from you know, experiencing the highest level of life at any age, like the happiest people I've ever met in my life. And I'm sure you have too, that are, you know, 60, 70, 80, you know, Bernie Siegel. I don't know if yeah. you've ever talked to yeah. Bernie Siegel. Yeah. He's, he's 90. He's turning 91 this year uh, in October. And he, I just talked to him the other day. He left me a voicemail and he's like, cause we're talking to him about coming out to our conference in October. And he called me back and left me a voicemail. He's like, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll send my, I can send my twin brother in my place. <laughs> he, can, he can speak for me. Nobody knows I have a twin, but, but he knows all my talks and he can speak for me, but, but nobody really knows about him because he's been in prison for the last 10 years, right? He goes on this elaborate story and, uh, and, and, you know, and at the end it's like, he's just joking and he's playing, he's having a good time. Like, this is somebody who has lived life to the fullest, you know, you know, about to be 91 and that's you know, the key, still plays and jokes every day. And it's so <laughs> awesome to, to be around that, you know, it really is. And, you know, it's, again, you mentioned, appreciate it. You know, that uh, I have the art of anti-aging and, uh, you know, we could dive more into this too, if you want anti-aging doesn't mean you're against getting older. It means, anti this message of aging that equates it with being over the hill and doomed to suffering. And, you know, things are all downhill from here in terms of the way you look and you feel. And this is an extremely prevalent mindset out there. It's probably the most dangerous toxin of all because a lot of people, you know, even when they hit 40 and certainly beyond, adopt that mindset. They, they, they can't shake it. You know, right. again, they might not publicly state that, but they believe I'm going downhill. And if you believe that down, you go. And, you know, I've put so much, uh, hopefully helpful material out there um, in, in very physical sense of health on, on how to live long, but it doesn't mean anything. What you really want to do is live well while living long, you know? And so, the material when I was more of this personal development uh, expert, I guess, or brand with the nine intense experiences, it applies a hundred percent. You know, that's just the first experience. I mean, I got the yeah, I happened to grab the book, you know, right here, the nine intense nice. experiences, and I call that that first one journey back to Neverland. Mm. And in the book, it did really well because I give people very specific, enjoyable, just you know, no matter which the experience 
or in some cases, um, awe-inspiring exercises to do. And what I highly recommend to people, Nathan, if, if especially if you're feeling resistance to this right now or you're downplaying the importance of play, one thing is go back, write down the 10 favorite books you had, let's just say as a preteen or a teen, and go back and read those books. Go back and read those books. It's like a spark happens inside of you. You know, I put Neverland. There's many plays on the word Neverland, but because Peter Pan was one of my own, you know, favorite books. And and when you go back and you and you reread those that gave you such awe and and pleasure and wonder when you're young, it char it recharges this wonder inside of you. It's just one way in. You know, each chapter has I don't know six seven different exercises to do of different sorts. You know, but yeah, that's just the first experience uh, in the book. But it's important. Thank you for listening to this short clip from the Nathan Crane podcast. Please share this on social media and to listen to the full podcast, visit NathanCrane.com.